Okay, so almost exactly 24 hours have passed. And you're gonna have to believe me on that. Uh, we made more progress on the car, maybe that's an indicator. But let's uh, open this up and look inside now. Uh, the nice thing is, we didn't have to do anything. We hit the button and walked away. All right. Okay, take a look in here. This foamy, yucky brown stuff is the dirt and the rust and all the stuff that came off the fasteners. And look at this. This is how they look right when they come out. Um, let me dunk it in this little water jug. And there you go. Uh, you can actually see the markings on the original fastener. That's one of the cool things about this. A lot of times if you sandblasted that or if you wire wheeled it, you might have, you know, you might ground those off. Um, you can also see the original black oxide. These were kind of blackened from the factory. And Eastwood makes a uh, kit to re-blacken these. So we could, you know, re-blacken them and they'll look exactly like brand new. The front sheet metal on these cars it comes off pretty simply. We took the hood off and set that aside because it adds weight to the process. Uh, and this was a pretty valuable hood being an original fiberglass GM uh, outside air induction hood. The uh, wiring is nice and simple on this car. You got headlights and horns. So what we're gonna try and do is take the whole front clip off without disassembling the fenders or anything. So all this sheet metal forward's gonna come off without destroying anything, hopefully. There's really only six or eight bolts uh, at the top of the fender, the bottom of the fender, and then a couple at the core support, and you can lift off the entire front sheet metal, what they call the front clip, in one piece. And this way it stays together. You don't have to worry about taking the grill out and all the rest of the stuff. And you can set it aside until you're ready to strip it and start working on it. It's a little easier to do it that way. It keeps things together. Once we got the front sheet metal off, we brought the car back into the shop and uh, sprayed the body mount bolts with our penetrating oil again. These ones are really rusty. They've been holding the body to the frame for a long time. They're underneath. So the more you can spray those, you, know, you can spray them and let them sit for a couple days. That's probably the best thing to do. But uh, our assistant Scott Geeney and I went through and loosened all those up. And then we disconnected the mechanisms that uh, would hold the body to the frame. For example, the throttle linkage, the steering, uh, the clutch linkage, and the clutch pedal. And then we disconnected the wiring harness from the front of the car so that that stuff would stay with the frame and then the body tub would just lift right off. Huh. The uh, grease they put in this connector back in 1971 is still soft. But I guess it's made with oil that's been soft for millions of years, so that shouldn't be too surprising. Another area we had to separate was the fuel tank. We took the fuel tank down and drained all the old gas. Quit sniffing gas. It smells. It's, no, it's, it smells like. It smells like a like a bad licorice booze. Look at that. Nasty. Cleans injectors as you drive. Once we got the fuel tank out, um, we separated the remaining fuel lines from the frame so that the body could come off the frame, and then we put it back on our two-post lift. Uh, lifting underneath the rocker panels and the uh, front cowl boxes and we were able to pick the whole body up right off the frame and that's kind of where we're at now. Here's our body floating in space and the frames underneath with the motor still intact and uh, our next step for the body is to put it on the auto twirler rotisserie and spin it around and start stripping it. Check this out over here on the firewall. There's some markings. This one says B5 and this other one says GG which I don't know if this is paint codes or whatnot. If anybody is big into Oldsmobiles and knows what those mean, uh, shoot me an email because, uh, you know, to restore the car properly, we gotta put those back on. And they actually look kinda cool, but I'm just curious to know what they mean. These style of cars, uh, the water from outside flows down here and then leaves collect in here and rust out the fenders, which isn't very cool. Uh, but all this dirt um, is preserving the original paint underneath and you can uh, clean this up and get a good indicator of what the original color was. You can see here, that's that Viking blue. It's been preserved for 36 years. That's a good color. That's the color the car is gonna be when it's done. Looks really nice out in the sunlight.